Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to use a sensor from Schneider called the SLPSX C2. The SpaceLogic SLP series air quality wall sensors for rooms is a versatile multi-sensor platform designed to work with BOSS controllers. It is designed to accept BA CNET MSTP or Modbus outputs. This device measures carbon dioxide, CO2, humidity, and temperature. It is commonly used in HVAC systems for temperature regulation and controlling fan speed. For more detailed information about this product, I recommend visiting the official website and downloading the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet provides comprehensive guidance on how to properly connect the sensor, including step-by-step -step setup instructions. It also covers important details such as the configuration process and the specific Modbus addresses assigned for each measurement parameter. Here is the product, this sensor can measure temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide levels. For communication, this device uses Modbus RTU. To enable wireless reading, I use an RS485 RTU to Wi-Fi adapter as a converter. If you want to know how to configure this adapter, you can watch my previous video where I explain the setup in detail. For cable installation, first remove the cover from the base at the bottom of the device. Inside, you'll find terminal pins for connecting the 24-volt power supply, as well as pins for the RS485 communication line, which we will connect to the RS485 to Wi-Fi adapter. There is also a dip switch for configuring the device address and communication settings. Here is the wiring to the terminals. Two wires for terminals 1 and 2 connect to the power supply's positive and negative terminals. Pins 3 and 4 are connected to the RS-485 to Wi-Fi adapter. Next is the configuration for the dip switches. For the switch address configuration, I set the value to 1, which is pin 1 is on. Then, for the switch communications configuration, I set pins 3 and 4 to on to configure Modbus with a baud rate of 57,600. Next, reattach the back cover to the front part of the device. Make sure the terminal pins are properly aligned and securely connected to the pins on the device. Then, turn on the power supply to power up the device. After that, connect the adapter's Ethernet cable so that it can join the network via Wi-Fi and be ready for reading the measurement values. Next, on your laptop's Wi-Fi settings, connect to the adapter's SSID, then open the adapter's web server to perform some configurations. Make sure the adapter is connected to the local Wi-Fi network, and adjust the baud rate setting to match the Modbus configuration we set earlier on the dip switch, which is 57,600. For other configuration steps related to connecting the RS-485 to Wi-Fi adapter to the local Wi-Fi network, please watch my previous video. Once the configuration is complete, reboot the adapter by unplugging and then reconnecting the Ethernet cable on the adapter. To read values from the Modbus device, I'm using Node-RED again. In Node-RED, we'll use the Modbus node to retrieve the data. In the Modbus node configuration, add a new server, enter the IP address that matches the adapter's configured IP, and set the correct port number. Make sure to select RTU buffered mode instead of TCP native. This is because the adapter is essentially bridging Modbus RTU communication over TCP, so the data is transmitted in the same frame format as RS-485 RTU. To find the Modbus register addresses we'll be reading, refer back to the instruction manual and look for the input register section. There, you'll find the addresses for values ranging from the temperature reading all the way to the model number, all stored within the input registers. Next, in the Modbus node, set the register address to 0, the quantity to 12, and the poll rate to 5 seconds. We'll be reading the register values according to the addresses listed in the manual. To view the output, we'll use a debug node to display the data in node red. We can now see that we've received values for each register, but the data we get for parameters like temperature through VOC readings is in 32-bit floating-point format, while the model number is represented as 4 times 16-bit ASCII characters in a single query. Therefore, we need to use a function node to process this data so that each value is correctly formatted and can be properly displayed on the dashboard. Here
Here is the code inside the function node that processes the data received from Modbus in 32-bit floating point format into decimal values. The output from this function node is split into several message payloads such as temperature, humidity, CO2, VOC, and model number. This way, we can easily display each of these values on the dashboard in the next step. Next, I use the FlowFuse dashboard to display these values. For real-time monitoring of temperature, humidity, CO2, and VOC, I use gauge widgets, with segmented limits in red, yellow, and green to indicate different ranges. To track historical changes, I use chart widgets to visualize the trends in temperature and humidity over time. Here is the dashboard view. On the left group, there are gauge widgets showing the real-time values for temperature, humidity, CO2, and VOC, refreshing every 5 seconds. On the right group, there are charts displaying the historical trends of temperature and humidity. For a more advanced setup, we can add a flow to store these values in a database for long-term analysis and record keeping. That's all for today's video. I hope this tutorial helps you understand how to set up and read data from the Schneider SLPSX C2 sensor using Modbus RTU and an RS485 to Wi-Fi adapter, as well as how to visualize the results in Node-RED with the FlowFuse dashboard. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.